didn't know you can drive a Lincoln into space? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Interstellar. Potentially habitable worlds right within our reach. Could save us from extinction. Here we go. You can't just think about your family now. You have to think bigger than that. I am thinking about my family and millions of other families. Maybe we've spent too long trying to figure all this out with theory. Love is the one thing that transcends time and space. In addition to the fate of humanity, there are also a number of Hollywood careers riding on Interstellar. In front of the camera, we have Matthew McConaughey. Now, last year, Dallas Buyers Club and True Detective were a one-two punch that resulted in an Oscar knockout. But can the McConaissance continue, or has it already become ripe for parody? A strong case was made for the latter when Jim Carrey hosted SNL just two weeks ago and basically slashed McConaughey's tires in a brutally on-target sketch. And while McConaughey's Lincoln ads survived a similar gag by Ellen, the Carrey spoof has so far been viewed almost 7 million times on YouTube. The actual commercials, which Lincoln has also aired on YouTube, can't even match that number combined. And with this joke fresh in people's minds, will it affect how seriously they take Interstellar? Although, if Interstellar does get torpedoed, it will be sweet justice leveled against McConaughey's co-star Anne Hathaway, who lampooned Claire Danes when she hosted SNL and Homeland never recovered. Now behind the camera we have, of course, Christopher Nolan, one of the few newly minted superstar directors of our day, thanks to his Batman trilogy. A status confirmed by his payday for Interstellar, rumored to be $20 million up front and 20% of the gross. But outside of the Batman trilogy, Nolan wasn't very successful, with each picture struggling to reach just $100 million at the box office. Even The Prestige couldn't get a boost from Batman Begins, despite Nolan reteaming with Christian Bale. But then came The Dark Knight, a film that wowed on every possible level. No one was able to leverage that film's stunning success with Warner Brothers, getting the studio to agree to make Inception in exchange for Nolan agreeing to make a third and final Batman movie. But he also leveraged it with audiences as they flocked to see his follow-up to The Dark Knight. The results were impressive. Yet still for Nolan, the Oscar has remained elusive. Interstellar is his own bid for the gold, but he might just have to worry about maintaining his box office reputation. The Dark Knight Rises didn't impress audiences nearly as much as The Dark Knight, and Man of Steel, which Nolan produced, might have not just worn down DC's brand, but potentially Nolan's. Plus, when Inception debuted in July 2010, it had no blockbuster competition for the remainder of the summer, while Interstellar will have to contend with Mockingjay Part 1, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, and perhaps even Exodus Gods and Kings. And finally, last year's incredibly well-received epic space drama Gravity might keep Interstellar from seeming as original as Nolan and company would hope. So will Interstellar help McConaughey and Nolan chart new trajectories for their careers? Or is it evidence it will be hard enough to maintain their current paths? Like one of the messages in the movie, I'm communicating with you through time and space. Yes, I'm coming to you from the Nolan Zone. And Interstellar truly exists in the heart of the Nolan Zone. Does that mean it's a perfect movie? I'm afraid not, but still, despite its flaws, it's so good. I just couldn't wait to discuss it with you. I was going to review it in the morning, but who can sleep when we can talk Interstellar? Now, I just got back from one of the very first showings of the movie on a Tuesday night, no less, because as we know, Christopher Nolan released the film two days early to any theater that could show it via film projection because he wants to protect the medium. But he might want to reconsider, because at least at my showing, we discovered that in deep space, there are long black hairs. Oh wait, that's just stuff stuck in the projector. At the very least, it was a nice trip down memory lane as to what it used to be like to see a movie in theaters. But according to Interstellar, you can't go back in time. Or can you? Don't worry, this is the non-spoiler review. The spoiler review will be going up shortly. But I do have an inside joke for you, and that's that for this movie, my comprehension levels were set at 66%. Why 66%? Well, for the first two-thirds of the film, it had me. I was sitting there going, Christopher Nolan, I can't believe that you actually managed to top The Dark Knight, and this is the best space movie I've ever seen. But by the time I got to 100%, I was like, okay, it's still the best space movie I've ever seen, but The Dark Knight is better. So what happens at that two-thirds mark? Well, again, this is the non-spoiler review, so I can't go into too much detail. But let's just say 
that the movie ejected me. The spell was broken, and that's because it ceased to make sense. Now, to be fair, I don't have much of an affinity for science or math, and perhaps those that do can follow the Nolan brothers down this rabbit hole of scientific theory. But I doubt even that, because to me, it seemed like the movie at that point moved away from science and it went towards religion. And by religion, I mean the religion of the Nolans, and that characters did things and things happened just because the Nolans said they did. But just because I don't have an affinity for science or math doesn't mean I don't love space. In fact, I went to space camp and I won the Right Stuff Award. But what appeals to me about space is the adventure and the wonder. And luckily, Interstellar has plenty of both. In fact, I would describe it as an intellectual superhero movie. And the hero is humanity. Oh, and the space scenes. I wish there were more of them. And again, I can't give too much away. But when the crew is hurtling through space, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before in a movie. It was just breathtaking. And I feel really bad that gravity might steal some of the thunder for Interstellar, at least with the Academy, because they don't like to repeat themselves, uh, because Interstellar is such a far superior film. It's just wonderful. And again, while it's not as good as The Dark Knight, it's certainly Nolan's second best film to date. It has all his favorite toys. And speaking of toys, I want a TARS. So I highly recommend you see Interstellar, and in fact, I recommend you see it as soon as possible on the biggest screen you can find. And then I hope you'll come back and watch my spoiler review. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you haven't seen Interstellar, you can check out these other episodes right now.